Just when you thought it was safe to lose your mask, after protecting you for two years in the pandemic, this mask might actually be your savior because we're facing an epidemic of bad air. And not just in India, and not just in Mumbai and Delhi, but worldwide. In India, however, there was a landmark study which showed the global burden of disease could be as high as 1.67 million people dying of diseases related to bad air. What may be your savior is this mask, because the majority of that bad air is due to particulate matter, and this mask will protect you against that. Join me in this episode to learn what's going on and how to protect yourself. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Nene, a US trained cardiac, thoracic, and vascular surgeon, and a general surgeon. As a healthcare innovator and a health tech innovator, I wanna empower you to your best health ever. On this channel, we will share evidence-based medicine from all of us to you through our experiences and training about health and healthcare. The goal is to help you make informed decisions about your own health as well as that of your loved ones. We're here for you, so don't hesitate to reach out. As we head into the winter season, I looked out my window and all I could see was what looked like smog to me. And yes, there was an inversion layer because the cold air was keeping all the hot air from rising, but it was much more than that. In 2017, a study was commissioned by the UN and Bill Gates, which demonstrated the global burden of disease worldwide as well as in India. And it showed that 1.67 million people died of diseases related to bad air quality. The interesting part about that was it constituted 17.8% of all the deaths that occurred in India in any given year, and also constituted 1.36% of the overall GDP of India. With those sorts of numbers, one would say that this could impede our progress and more importantly, impact on every single one of us. So as we started to understand what constitutes air quality, air quality indexes are calculated by looking at a combination of particulate matter, gases, and other components. And in specific, there's ambient particulate matter, there's household particulate matter, and then there's ground level ozone, uh, which is looked at. The main sources of ambient particulate matter pollution in India are residential and commercial biomass burning, wind-blown mineral dust, coal burning for energy generation, industrial emissions, agricultural stubble burning, waste burning, construction activities, brick kilns, transport vehicles, and diesel generators. Whereas household air pollution is caused mainly by use of solid fuels for cooking, such as wood, dung, agricultural residues, coal and charcoal. And finally, ground level ambient ozone pollutants emitted from transport vehicles, power plants, factories, and other sources react in the presence of sunlight with hydrocarbons emitted from diverse sources. So now we know that there are significant amounts of air pollution being generated in industrialized countries and India is no different with the amount of construction. In the north, it's more likely that you see this because it had this arid conditions as well as uh, very strong winters with in inversion layers. But even in Mumbai, where we have vast amounts of construction with metro, with coastal roads, with new buildings going on site, the amount of particulate matter has gone up significantly. Why is that important? Most health experts agree that the 2.5 micron or PM 2.5 uh, size particulate matter is the worst for you. So how does this affect your lungs? It's thought that the particulate matter, particularly 2.5 microns in size, penetrates the deepest parts of your lungs and can result in worsening of asthma, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, reactive airways, as well as exacerbating heart disease and other findings. And as a result of that, they've associated this type of air pollution with increased deaths. Now, I have to be clear about this. While we think that 1.67 million people are dying from this, the truth is we don't know for sure. And in India, it's a difficult situation in that we don't have one all-cause mortality counter, which we've talked about before. So we don't really know what the impact is, but what we think is that 40% of India may have diminished lifespans as a result of bad air. 
And so the question then is, what can you do about this? If we assume that the majority of the issue is from excess particulate matter, from road dust, construction, burning stubble, doing all of these things, is there something that might work? It turns out this little mask here, the N95, can protect you just as effectively against this type of particulate matter and potentially save your life. Have there ever been studies directly on that? No, but they have been indirectly on that in construction sites and in places where lots of dust is exuded and workers are mandated to wear these masks, where they have shown that there's a decrease in mortality. So after all said and done, what can we do together to reduce this? The first is we can be a little more observant and try to reduce the amount of dust making activities. Now, does that mean less road construction, less building construction? I think as we go from an agrarian to an industrialized society, some of this cannot be prevented. But I think what we can do while that's going on as a populace is to use our masks when we're out. Secondly, you can have a clean air, air conditioning system which actually filters that air, or you can use devices. And in Delhi, these are quite popular now, which try to decrease the AQI significantly. Third, we can be a little greener about the choices we make. And some of those are in indication to mass transit as well as with the cars we choose and the fuels that we use. And then fourth, we need to look around us and make sure that the people most at risk are doing the things that they need to do, meaning masks for the elderly and the young who typically are the ones who get affected the most. So in my opinion, if these four or five things are practiced, my hope is that we will improve. There was a period during the pandemic where I just remember looking up at the sky and it was bright and clear. Remember those pictures, because I want a future with lots of them for all of us. Until then, let's take precautions so we don't wreck each other's lungs and we live longer, better lives together. Thanks for joining me. As always, hit the like button if you liked what we said. Hit the subscribe button so that we'll always give you the new updates. And remember to share this with all your friends because they deserve to know about it as well. Take care and see you in the next video.